the night on this particular day I am sick so unfortunately the only downside to having kids is you get sick more often as far as I'm concerned it's the only single negative that's in any way meaningful is if you have kids you are guaranteed to get sick more often and I wasn't someone who was like I never got sick it was just a normal amount I would say nothing crazy nothing inconvenient but having kids is they'll get you oh they'll get you there's people with kids now watching this nodding along thinking oh Oh, that's true, yep, yep. I'm convinced it's because once the virus gets into the child, it learns your immune system and goes, ah, I know how to get you now. So is not great. On top of that, my subscap is kind of inflamed, mostly in the pressing position and at the elongated position at the bottom in the pull. So totally normal. This is actually a, a good example, two good examples of training while sick and is it injury or is it pain? So training while sick is all of the time it's a good idea to be prudent and not train. You're almost better off heads or tails. You're better off coming up trumps. You'll more likely be making the right decision if just not training or sick. I'm not that sick tonight, but you can probably hear it in my voice. But pain and injury, so information with subscap when I'm pressing was like a seven out of 10. That was like a four out of 10. I knew it was when it was happening, I was like, oh, this isn't, this is nothing major. It happened the day after Jiu Jitsu, but I don't think it is anything to do with Jiu Jitsu. I'm pretty sure it's with snatching on Sunday as opposed to Jiu Jitsu. I don't think it's related because there's no pain during Jiu Jitsu and it's only on pressing or long movements with that wide grip. So it could have happened, but I'm, it's more likely to be the culprit of starting to snatch again. So tonight what we'll do is deviate, not deviate. Oh no, my brain's not working. What's the other word? Adapt? That's not right. Deviate? No. Diverge? It's not it. Maybe it's adapt. Maybe it is a dat. Just people like, oh, and it says a dat. Screaming at the telly. I hope you watch this on the television. Or you're maybe you're watching your food. Tell me what you're doing right now. I am interested. And not in a like, oh, sneaky way to leave a comment. I want to know because I want to know who's watching and what you're doing. I spend so much time thinking about social media, you know. I was talking to one of my friends recently and he's a carpenter. And he was like, oh, just kind of hating the social media stuff. And he's like, yeah, I just need to get on it. And <laughs> I was like, yeah, I spend a lot of time. And he's like, oh, it was much time. And I'm like, ah, about four hours a day, maybe. Doing stuff for social media. Oh, no. No, the lace is just ruined. Okay, I need to melt something onto that. So any hoodle back to the original point was if I was just sick and not have the owie, I would just do my snatching and probably be do fine. But in the interest of not making an issue where there's no need to be an issue, I'm gonna do some, just some gentle overhead stuff, not too much, then get on my back squats. And then I will do some more RDLs, I think. It's probably the biggest bang for my buck at the moment to hit my trifecta, so my sprinting, my jiu-jitsu and weightlifting, not that I'm doing weightlifting, is the RDLs great for, of course, sprinting for hamstrings. And if you're getting block two of the horse program, you will, uh, you will get some big hammies. So also good for jiu-jitsu, see strong hamstrings, that hinging position, being strong there, so valuable in not getting swept and obviously at the knee position in weightlifting. It's very, 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 very important. As you know, I'm having my struggles with 
I'm having my struggles with uh, the overhead position, but we are winning. It is getting there. It's just tough. Oh, oh it's all sore. Okay, let's move on to some back squats. 90, not bad. So the weight feels pretty light. Elbow is, is getting there. So we look at that kind of full extension for me. It is improving slowly, but you can see by the angle of that forearm, there's still a bit of weight to go. So 90 kilos, sub scap is a little bit irritable on the last one. Eh. It's definitely not something that will cause any issue. So a lot of times people are asking, they're like, oh, how do I know where should I train through? And you will never get anywhere performance wise is if you're not training through some aches and pains. In terms of how do I know when it's an injury or a pain or an injury and an ache or something to train through is something you'll just have to learn over time. Obviously hearing on the side of caution is the best and having a coach can help you, but it's something you just have to learn over time. Now move on to back squats, probably up the reps a little bit, but I'll see how it goes. Uh, probably maybe a little bit more volume on the way up as opposed to the top set. So I'll see how it feels. I'll see if the sub scap is annoyed by the back squat. Probably shouldn't be, but uh, you'll never know. Currently we're listening to Triad songs. So Triad is traditional Irish music and I have always had a penchant for it. I can play a couple of instruments actually, long out of practice, but <laughs> um, it's uh, something I've always liked. And some of them are upbeat, some of them are sad, some of them are about revolution, some of them are about drinking, riding, all the good stuff in life.
So top set of three at 230, it's not bad. 230, 230 kilos. So it's the heaviest I've touched since I did 300, which is kind of crazy, which wasn't even that long ago, two months ago. And yeah, things feel okay. Tonight is not a good representation, but the top set of three is fine at 230. As I was saying, I think I'll remain, I do my best remain within a stone's throw of kind of 270. So, you know, if you gave me a week or something, I could probably hit at 270. You know, there's no need to be attached to those numbers. I think it's a big mistake. Some people make is they're just afraid to let things go. Powerlifters are the biggest culprits of this, but weightlifters are very, very similar. Both cohorts want to do those heavy singles to test just to see. And in my opinion, it's a poor form of training, but also it's a form of psychological weakness in training that you can't muster up the belief in yourself that you can hit those numbers when you need to hit them and the training will come around. It's very common with powerlifters. It's a thought process that goes on with weightlifters, but they're happier to kind of go through with it. But some of the newer wave of powerlifters have a harder time of just saying, no, the top single will be there when it'll see there. I need to do the work. The, the top singles you do along the way aren't that useful. It's the training volume you do that is useful. And then you, you know, when it's time to hit the, the big numbers on the competition platform and part of thing, that's when you do it. Way things different, we need to hit those other ones sooner. But weightlifters also kind of have a harder time. But to be fair, in weightlifting, physiologically, those singles are less punishing if you go for them. The clean and jerk ones are more punishing. The test snatch ones technically are a bit more punishing. So when we go heavier in the snatch, clean and jerk, when we're on good shape, we we'll generally end up with poor quality technique. And that's then terrible because you're reinforcing bad technique. You're muddying the waters with bad technique. So something to bear in mind are you doing it because you think it's better for you or are you doing it because you are being a bit of a bitch and you can't just have a bit of patience and follow through with the program now i'm not saying everyone i'm not painting everyone with that brush but it is a common problem common enough that it's a thing that we do see with people so i'm going to leave it there for tonight's session um the energy is low but that's okay so training when you're sick when i came into the session i was like look the threshold of how sick i am isn't high enough that I can't train tonight or shouldn't train tonight. Now, that said, would it have been as a smart decision not to train tonight? Yeah, absolutely. But I knew from lots of experience of training when I'm sick and not training when I'm sick that tonight was gonna be fine. Um, sometimes you feel a little bit better, but I'd wonder, is that a bit of false courage? Is that a second wind when you're drinking points, but in reality, you should have stopped drinking ages ago. It's a little bit of a, is that a little bit of a shoulder? A little bit of a shoulder. So I'm gonna do my cardio 20, 25 minutes tonight. And then I will finish there. I might have a hot bath. Today's say Thursday. So what I'm gonna do is probably include more training days in the vlog. I think it just makes for a bit of a better viewing experience, but do let me know. And there I know if there's anything you want to see in the training vlogs. There's actually Jiu-Jitsu Camp Saturday week, which I think I'll do. I just need to check if there's people in the ultra heavy class because I have no, in no intention of water cutting. So it'll be my first blue belt competition. So it's good to get it out of the way and do it. But uh, Jiu Jitsu's going pretty good at the moment. So whatever happens, happens. I am being, trying to be really even with my intentions for Jiu Jitsu. So, it's very, very important to me, and I don't think I've talked about this yet. I'll probably make a separate video, but it's very, very important to me that I don't make jujitsu my weightlifting, and you know, I don't make jujitsu my my new thing. You know, jujitsu just has to become part of what I'm doing, and not take over. And I dedicate time to it, of course, and thought, and I train hard, of course. But it's very, very important to me that it does become a, a newfound religion or rather in my case weightlifting you know when i started weightlifting my goal was to be a very 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 good the best possible weightlifter i could be and i'm still on that journey as evidenced by recent training pbs but it was kind of interfering with to be honest my enjoyment of jiu-jitsu because i was too focused on getting better when i should just be a bit more relaxed and it was 
needed to kind of reassess where it is, you know, and definitely since about mid last summer, I've been much better. You know, I was annoyed at training some nights, not annoyed at anyone, just annoyed at myself that I wasn't better and I need to do things differently. And which is kind of the way I would approach weightlifting. And I actually don't think that's a bad thing. I think that was actually a very good thing for my weightlifting because you know, sometimes we kind of feel like, oh, I shouldn't feel like I'm under pressure and it should all be easy and I don't feel really good now and oh man, this is terrible. I don't think, I don't think that's the case at all. Sometimes in the right scenarios, you should feel under pressure. I think you should feel that you aren't good enough and you need to work harder. I think that is motivation talking. I think that's your brain telling you that you need to do better and then you need to put the foot down if you want to be good at something. I don't know any, I don't know any elite athletes who is not selfish in that regard, you know. They might not be a selfish person. I know lots of very nice elite athletes, but a lot of them are pretty mental, pretty driven. And we mostly hear business people talk about this and entrepreneurs and all that shit. But as much as I don't like listening to that, it is very, very similar to elite athletes, you know. And it is very similar in that you, self self abuse isn't such a bad thing sometimes you know it's not bad for you to be like you know what that's not good enough or i'm not good enough yet and you feel that pressure and that pressure makes you do more training i used to for the first like two years first year yeah definitely two years of weightlifting maybe longer every time i finished my session i would just spend time with barbell and 40 kilos trying to do technical work trying out different positions different static starts different dynamic starts and i did that for ages you know and it's something i was trying to make up last ground i was also trying to make up not using peds like my competitors on the international scene or well my goals were i'm going to make up they've started at 10 I started at 17, which is still a great age to start weightlifting. Actually, the, well, technically the week I started 18 was when I started. And I was trying to make up some extra training and extra processes and get some extra reps in to see if I could make up those years. And it definitely stood to me. But that pressure, I think, is something that is very, very valuable in all facets of your life. You know, if you're in your relationship and you feel like you're not doing enough, you shouldn't be like, oh no, this is terrible. You should be like, shit, I'm not pulling my weight or, you know, um, a business relationship, a business partnership, uh, a project group in, in university, doing stuff at work, all of that stuff. You know, if you kind of feel that voice sometimes and that pressure, it's not always a bad thing, you know, to, to feel that intensity of emotion. Now, it is a bad thing if it controls your decisions, if those decisions are the wrong decisions to make, but feeling that and going, oh, hang on, this, is, this isn't good enough for, you know, when you're cutting weight or you're dieting or you're supposed to be eating food and then you eat something stupid and then you continue it for the rest of the day and then you feel like shit, you know, there's kind of like people will tell you like, oh, you shouldn't berate yourself and that's a bad relationship with food, no. No, you fucked up. Like, you made the wrong decision. You shouldn't have eaten what you shouldn't have eaten. You, you ate what you shouldn't have eaten, you know? And you've gone and done that. You've made a bad decision and you should berate yourself. You should be like, oh, I made a bad decision. That's noted. You should have those consequences for your actions. You shouldn't abuse yourself, you know, not telling, go to town and do a thousand sit-ups and run 10K after. But you should be like, that was a decision I shouldn't have made. And, once is fine, but if you keep doing it and you keep just pandering to yourself and saying, oh, it's okay, I'll get better next week, which is okay in some circumstances, but if you're really trying to get somewhere and you've made the decision that you're going to get there, maybe it's a physique goal, maybe it's whatever, training, whatever it is, and you keep fucking up, then you should feel bad. You should berate yourself a little bit. You should be like, you know what, get your shit together. You should go behind the squat rack point the finger at yourself and tell yourself that you should have done better, you know? There's there's a lot of this kind of ideas. In some ways in social media, there's too much negativity, which we always hate and we're doing our best to be the opposite of. But then we have people talking about trauma and pandering to yourself, but I don't think you should pander yourself. Not the people watching this, not you guys. You shouldn't be pandering to yourself all the time. Look, if you go off your diet a little bit, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't a little bit. But if you keep fucking up and it's been three months and you haven't lost any weight or you've gained more fat or you haven't gotten enough sleep, or you haven't done the things you're supposed to do for the goals you set to yourself, you should feel bad. Or if training is not going great, 
it's okay to feel bad it's okay to be annoyed because that's motivation in my opinion and that's if you really want to get very far now again I know we talk about the gym not being your therapy and that's a different side of things but if you are emotionally well regulated and you are just annoyed that the training isn't going so well then just acknowledge the feelings it should spur some more positive action you know they they're like don't compare yourself to anyone else and we say that a lot and it is true but if you're really competitive when it comes to your goals I compare myself to a lot of people in training along, especially people that are related or when I'm when I was weightlifting, there was people in the country better than me. Uh, like for example, there was the clean and jerk national record I had. So when I did 166 at 105 after three and a half years of weightlifting, I think was a three and three and a half. And the guy who said it actually tested positive a few months later when he took it. Everyone knew he was on, but it didn't really matter at the time. There were so few people kind of competing. But that was a goal I said I was going to beat that. You know, there's, it's okay to be annoyed and competitive. It's not supposed to consume you, but it should drive you a little bit. And it shouldn't affect you all day, but a little bit of the day, you know. Get after it a little bit. Okay, so welcome to day two of the training vlog. Today we're doing the plyometric session and we are doing our upper body training. For the plyometric stuff, we're gonna just do some simple box jumps. So I'm sure you've followed along by now. I like two different plyometric slash jumping variations when I'm doing plyometrics. One is a warm up, but still productive activity, but certainly less intense. And then we're gonna move on to some depth jumps jumping onto the bench and we'll just focus on being as explosive as possible. So for the warm up, I'm gonna squat down really deep into the bottom of the squat and then just to warm up my legs as much as possible and then ensure that when I'm kind of landing on the bench, I'm in a position where I'm kind of warmed up by the time I get to the box jumps. So we'll do a couple of sets of this and then we'll move on to the depth jumps. I haven't been stretching my hip and if any of you, a lot of you've been watching the vlogs for a couple of months now or longer, you'll know that last year when I was doing the squatting, my right hip flexor, the soft tissue was giving me grief and it built up some tolerance to the squatting, but just doing the couch stretch daily was a huge improvement on it. And of course, when I haven't been squatting as much, I fell off the, wan the bandwagon and now it's kind of inflamed again so it's a little bit sore so i need to get back stretching and that's it's a lesson that's why we always say keep doing your prehab keep doing your rehab until it becomes prehab and then keep doing that prehab for at least six months after the injury now i know we might get like physios and people like uh, rehab doesn't do anything everyone regresses to the mean but we know exercise encourages changes in soft tissue, CNS. We know we learn new skills. We know exercise has aerobic cardiovascular changes. We know what it affects our brain. We know it affects our metabolism. We know it affects everything. So why would we not assume that some exercise can possibly affect pain, you know? And it's always safe to incur the prehab and do it for as long as possible after because injuries always crop up, especially when they're not acute injuries, if they're repetitive strain injuries whatever the source of your injury is probably still there. And if you're still doing that activity, you probably need to reinforce it for longer than you think. So we're actually going to do the jumping over because I think the landing might aggravate the hip. So we'll just do the jump over and it's probably smarter because that's the style we were doing previously a few weeks ago. So we'll try and keep it consistent and try and progress from there. So let's do a couple of sets.
okay, the golden rule of plyometrics is coming in. So they're just not good enough on the horizontal component. So we're gonna try a few more vertical ones and see if they're better. But if they're not, I'll just have to leave it for today. Get any major benefit in them. Gym. Just put this video up from the Asian Championships of Wan Hyun Sim, snatching 86 kilos, 45 kilos body weight. So that's nearly double body weight. So Wan uses. No one broke character. Enough times gone by, I've had enough to think about why nobody would break character while I was there. And for real, I'm fairly certain they thought that I was a special needs man. <laughs> like they all got together and they were like, look, this is obviously a big day for this guy. <laughs> Nobody break character, let's make it magic for him. Specialties to rush people to the hospital, but also to sift through this debris. All this mangled metal and material. This missile debris contains important clues. If you zoom in, you're gonna see something crazy. This will understand how Russia is making their missiles, what ingredients they're using, and where those ingredients come from. So without Western technology, Russia wouldn't be able to build missiles. And it's not just one power converter from Vicor. This missile is packed with microelectronics, the key, most sophisticated parts of the missile that come from the West. Like the communication controller, which is made by Zilog, another American company. The guidance system, which runs on three microprocessors, all three made by... Many of them eventually ending up in missiles or drones or other vital weapons being used to invade Ukraine and kill its people. This is a quintessential case of modern warfare. How microtechnology used for computers is being weaponized and flowing target you and call you and email you and send stuff to your house. I find this fairly violating. So the way this works is you sign up for Incogni and you give them permission to act on your behalf, to go out and to make a request to these hundreds of data broker lists that you and I are on to tell them that you want to be off the list. And by law, these companies are required to take you off the list. That's what's awesome. Once you give them permission, you get access to this dashboard. You get to see all of the requests they've sent out. Since I signed up for Incognate, my phone has been quieter, my email's been more chill, my... So that's one of my rehab exercises from Dr. Steph. And whew, that is tough. It's supposed to be on a roller, but I don't have that requisite tensile capacity to keep it locked out, which is interesting. So more to work on.
Dutch guy who started shipping microchips to Russia via Kazakhstan to disguise the real destination. So this stuff is so awesome. Pretty good session. Did what I need to do. Now I'm gonna go swimming. I'll swim a few lengths, then I'll come back, do some cardio, 20, 30 minutes worth of cardio, and do some more mobility stuff that I didn't do as my warm up. So I'll see you in day three.
Okay, so snatches are done. This is day three. Um, very happy with those snatches near the end. The last two sets were very good. So we did eight doubles at 90. So what would you call that? Medium, medium volume for weightlifting for a session. So because I'll only be doing, for now at least, two snatch sessions a week, I'll do the volume pretty high for a while. And snatching is not like the clean and jerk. Clean and jerk, you need to lift heavy weights. You need to feel the heavy weights, but you need to be powerful. You need to be precise. You need to be overloading when you need to be overloading. You need to be going heavy when you're supposed to be going heavy. You need to do the right assistance work. All of these things need to be correct for a big clean and jerk to happen. But for the snatch, it's like knitting. At least if I knew how to knit, that's what I imagine knitting would be like. Is you just need to be slow and consistent and do lots of knits lots of stitches, lots of twacking with your needles, and then slowly progress through with the snatches. So you need to coax the snatch out of it. It's kind of like that chisel marble kind of thing where you, it's kind of like that chiseling from marble. You're just slowly revealing the snatch. Certainly in my case, when I've done much heavier weights before, I know how to snatch. I can even feel by the end of that eight set, seventh set i felt so much better that i knew what i was looking for my body was kind of learning with the conscious thought so as i was thinking about cues my body was like oh yeah i remember these and then i know what to do from this cue and obviously i know what my best ever snatch technique feels like what those good weights feel like what that 155 felt like but i also have a lot of coaching knowledge and i know what the technical model is supposed to be like so i'm able to combine both of those in my 12th year of snatching and we end up with good quality sessions like this so i'm also in a great position where i have the huge benefit of obviously 10 months of a lot of squatting a lot of leg strength so my general capacity is high along with the other stuff i'm doing so those snatch snatches are in a good position you know so i'm very happy with those by the end you saw some of the warm-up for my elbow my overhead position not very good right now. It's getting better each time, but as along with the elbow extension, I'm doing a lot of overhead work with Dr. Steph. So hopefully we can improve that more because I'm slightly forward on a lot of reps and it's not my technique that's causing it. It's the position where I'm just slightly internally rotated, slightly very internally rotated on one side and a little bit more on the other side. So that needs to be improved upon. My extra rotation is quite poor at the moment. So, gonna move on to some squats. Gonna do some higher volume on squats, higher volume fives or something. Because like I was saying in the last session, kind of can't keep getting away with doing trees. And I also wanna give this a little bit of a break from the maximum heavy weights. And I need to just give it a little bit more volume. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit more volume for the squat to keep it sort of where I wanna keep it, you know? If I wanna keep it in the kind of 270-ish range or when a big throw, stone's throw of 270, then I need to give it a little bit more. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit more, especially it's only two sessions per week. Oh. Are they Reeboks? Are they Adidas? No, it's a... I can't tell what shoes are. Oh, they are. might be Adidas. Are they Lishtungs? I don't no, think they're Lishtungs. Lish Lish no. I don't know what shoes they are. If you don't know, all the pulls help the Chinese squat like that. Yes, bless you. Excuse me. I definitely think a lot of pulls help. I think that's the case in Lee Sang's case as well. He's getting some additional leg strength mm -hmm. from his pulls. I think it's mostly the back strength he's getting yeah. for the squats. But he, like you definitely, for most people, you're not going to be, your main driver of leg strength won't be pulls. Right. And he, one of the things that he said recently is he, if he becomes president, he wants to bring back the death penalty. Which, for me, I personally don't think it's gonna solve anything. But, um, yeah, it's trying to get us to murder people, like all these crazy things, and then but he's just using like that as an ex like a way to manipulate her but he's not realizing that all these things these things that he's saying well like she's crazy maybe we should actually withdraw Okay, 
so topped out at 220 for a triple felt pretty good actually pretty happy with that feels kind of it's been pretty similar the last couple of weeks so that's good and i reckon it'll stay pretty good i think if i keep doing this so like it's not the day i warmed up to 300 kilos but as i said that is totally fine it's feeling good now feels like in a nice place could i do another set yeah do i need to go also yeah so i'm gonna leave it there so i did a bit more warm-up sets two sets of 170 two sets of 200 tapped out then at 220 uh, a little bit a little bit more reps but not, not a huge amount we'll just slowly increase the volume a little bit over the next few weeks just a little bit but not a whole lot just keep focusing on everything else everything's going quite nice hip feels almost better since thursday when i talked to you last about the hip or even yesterday and the plyos just need to stretch it and the inflammation dies down an awful lot so just got to stay on top of that as much as possible and if i keep stretching it, it should be okay so just need to not be a dumbass so happy how the snatch just felt now what i should do is i need to do some step ups and i need to do some core but i need to finish the training session or rather i am putting a stop in my training session here and then i need to do other stuff and i still have to do my conditioning so hope you enjoyed the bigger training vlog i actually kind of enjoyed recording it more for some reason i felt like i didn't have to pack as much into one video even though i'm getting more in one video so i think it'll be a better product hope you're enjoying dara's vlogs as well so as everyone kept asking he is uploading them now and he's training them and someone was asking about any collabs coming up this year and the answer is there is one it's not a weightlifting collab i won't say who yet just in case it doesn't happen but rugby guys you will be happy you'll be excited to see that one i'm very excited i'm excited but i'm not as excited as dara is excited i'm not sure if dara will be able to keep it together for the video so <laughs> um that we're going to be doing a hopefully a training video and maybe if we have time a vlog but yeah i'm, I'm just i'm just hoping dara won't embarrass the two of us and just say something stupid like a like a a 15 year old girl meeting justin bieber in 2010 kind of stupid okay so we'll just try and collectively let's all hope let's light a candle that dara can keep his keep himself together and we can just have a nice and normal conversation training session okay all right thanks for watching enjoy your weekend or your week